Hey there everybody, it's Mega Draco coming to you with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Shadows of War. Specifically, what we're going to be talking about is a little bit about the actual company itself and a few kind of underhanded moves that they've recently been doing. The article we're going to be looking at is from Polygon, so I can't really tell 100% how accurate this is going to be. However, if what they say is true, and it is in fact accurate, it is something to start questioning a little bit about what Warner Brothers is doing with the new game. I'm obviously a huge fan of the game, and I'm, I'm definitely going to be getting it myself. I haven't pre-ordered it just yet, or I have. I think I have, actually, now that I think about it. But the point is, is that the game is one of those games that I'm going to be getting one way or the other. It will should be coming out sometime in October, and it's a game that I really want to get. However, this is something that's becoming a huge controversial point uh, when it comes to just this game in general. Unfortunately, it seems like Shadows of War is going the way a lot of games have gone, and taking on microtransactions as a primary way to bring money into the actual gaming, to the actual company, uh, utilizing loot boxes and other things like that. Anyways, let's go on ahead and actually go and look at the article here and see what we've got going. Now, as I did say, this is from Polygon, as you can clearly see. Uh, it is run by a Chris Scullion. I'm going to go with Scullion. I'm not entirely sure how to say that last name. However, we see that the, it starts off with Shadows of War Tribute has fine print and fans deserve to know where their money is going. Now, the actual title is a little controversial because they act like they're trying to say that they know where the money is going, where in reality they don't. Now, to set the premise for you guys, and we're just going to, we're not actually going to really read this article all the way through. We're just going to lead probably the first part of it, and then I'll go over the rest of it as I usually do. Um, as you can see here, um, we have, I guess, this picture of what the new DLC is coming out as and so on and so forth, and then we've got the article. Middle-Earth Shadows of War hasn't been without its share of controversy over the past few months, but players may have found their breaking point with the latest de debacle. Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment has already faced criticism for the way it's been handling the Shadows of War's Shadows of Mordor's sequel, being the whole extra payment and all that kind of stuff taking what has, was a much-loved single-player adventure and changing it into a case study of everything that's wrong with modern AAA games. And I can kind of agree with that, because the way it sounds that a lot of that they're, what they're doing with Shadows of War does kind of sound like something that's... It's the same most like it's the same problem that most AAA games are fighting and they're facing, and it just feels like they're just adding to it. So, I don't know. I kind of agree with that statement, so let's just keep moving on with that. Fans have been irked by the $300 Special Edition, the premium DLC that has already been announced before the base game is out, and the addition of randomized pay-to-win loot boxes available via microtransaction. It's not a great direction for the series. Which is, you know, going back to the, their original statement of how they were handling the sequel, and uh, that was like... That was something that it was actually fairly interesting to see. I didn't actually know that there was a special edition out that was going to be like $300. The latest news, however, that of the Fort Hog Orc Slayer DLC could perhaps be a step too far unless Warner Brothers reassures us in explicit, precise terms that the revenue isn't being used improperly. Um, specifically, we're going to go into this a little bit more. I'm not going to obviously watch this video or anything like that. Um... To explain it a little bit better than they do, the best way to explain the Fort Hog DLC, Orc Slayer DLC, is that the Orc Slayer DLC is an homage to an individual who passed away last year who was a producer and working on the game. He passed away and he has a, mo he has a wife and two children and... What Warner Brothers Studios and everything else are doing, they are trying to do is pretty much make money for the family by charging for the DLC for only about like five dollars. It's like four fifty, I think, is the exact price. Um, four ninety nine or something along those lines. Uh, let me check real quick. I think they have it listed here. Four ninety nine. Yes, it is right there. Um, so for four ninety nine, uh, you can purchase this DLC and. Uh, $3.50 will go to the family. 
um, which you can see right here. For every Fort Hog Orc Slayer purchased, the Fort Hog family through December 31st, 2019. Uh, the trailer of the character explains. So basically, any purchase of the DLC between whenever it's released until December 31st of 2019, all of the most, if most of the actual price will, most of the money will go to their family, or to her, to the, to his family. And the reason why I mean, I guess, is because he was a really loved uh, member of the team, and I just wanted to do something nice for him. Now, and the reason why they're only probably getting $3.50, and they even explain it here a little bit, is because of the fact that, let's face it, there's probably some vendor purchases that they have to take care of. Like, I think like he's, they mentioned on here that Steam requires a 30%, I think right here. Um, on Steam, for example, this amount is 30%, which amounts to $1.50 in the situation, so the element at least seems to be above board. Effectively, they're saying is that their only reason why they're not making the full cash is because they have to technically pay the vendors. So, and that makes sense. That's reasonable, completely reasonable. Now, moving on from all of that, it starts to actually explain the issue. The issue then isn't the amount going to the Forgery family. The issue is that the extremely small print that appears at the bottom of the trailer, it's more prominent on the DLC Steam page, which states. Donations will be made on purchases from any one of the 50 states, United States or District of Columbia, but excluding purchases made from Alabama, Hawaii, Illinois, Massachusetts, Mississippi, or South Carolina. In other words, if you live in those states, none of that $4.99 will be going to the family of the deceased. Or at least, that's what they're saying. This is likely because those six states have registration requirements regarding commercial co-ventures between a company and a charity. So Warner Brothers would need to register with those states before being able to give the money to Forge, the Forgy's family. It's not clear why it won't do this. Um, right, and they don't exactly explain, like, apparently so far they don't actually know why Warner Brothers won't just register with those states. Not like it would be that difficult. They're a huge multi-million dollar company, so whatever. No big deal. But we move on to say that it moves on to basically say that the agreement is also invalid everywhere else in the world. Um, but the Slayer, um, but the Orc Slayer is in Canada, UK, Australia, Germany, or any other country that isn't the US, and it appears the 40 family won't be seeing any cent of any income from any other country. However, moving further down here, we actually do have the mention that neither Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment nor Monolith Productions will profit from any sales of the Fort Hog Orc Slayer DLC, regardless of the territory in which this DLC is sold. Now, that's very... I mean, that's very predominant wording, in my opinion, and that's something I kind of disagree with Polygon and saying that that's not enough. I, I'm not saying that it is enough necessarily. I do feel like I would like to know where the money is going. If you're going to tell me that you're going to be doing a donation, you're doing donations to a family, and but there's a lot of places that you're they're not going to get any money from, then why are you doing it at all? You know what I mean? Why? Why set like why why do it that do that at all? Why and and where is the money that that stuff is going going to go like are they going to just take the money from their income and just be like okay well we we sold this many copies i mean don't get me wrong it's not exactly hard they could probably just get like somebody who just knows math a little bit and go we sold this many copies this is how much we've made and just take all of that and hand it to the family i don't know how charities work i don't know how donations work i just know that that's how it should work but I digress. The point is, is that it's very plausible that they might already have a way to figuring it all out to where the family does receive all of the money, but they just don't want to explain it to us. Maybe they can't. I don't know. It goes on to basically be, you know, to criticize them a little bit about this. If you buy the DLC in another region, be it Chicago, Chile, or the Czech Republic, that $3.50 won't be going to the Forgy family. And now, I will say that that's kind of the weird and bad wording that he's using. He's saying that it won't go to the Forgy family. However, as you can see up here at the top, it's saying that 
it's not saying that they won't get the money. It's just saying that the donation won't work effectively here. So maybe they have another way of doing the donation. Maybe they already have it set up. Maybe they will be making the money and then taking them what they make off of it and giving it to donations directly to the family. I mean, it's very not exactly difficult for a company to do that. So I don't see why they wouldn't. Now, why they haven't just told us that's what they're going to do, I don't know. And I, I can't disagree with the with the writer here about that. So it's kind of one of those things that's like a bit of a catch-22. Catch now, that is one of those things that I can't necessarily disagree with, though, with this particular... Um, now, this is one of those things that I can't really disagree with with Polygon here, the writer of this article, because I don't know why they don't just write it. However, I'm waiting to, you know, make massive judgment on this particular article as well as this particular move by the company um, until I've gotten a little bit more information. Because it feels like he's made, he's speaking in very, like, it feels like the writer of this article is speaking in very, very specific, very, very specific It feels to me like the writer of this particular article is using very specific wording as if he knows for a fact that none of this is going to happen. But in reality, you can, if you read it, read a little bit of the nuance here, you can clearly see that he doesn't actually have a clue what's going to happen with all the money. Um, and especially when you farther get, get down here a little bit further and it goes on here where it says, We asked Warner Brothers where the money would be going, along with other questions raised in this piece. The company responded with its previous statement, neither Warner Brothers Interactive nor Monolith Productions will profit in any sales of the Fort Hog Orc Slayer, regardless of the territory in which the DLC is sold. Effectively, the idea is, is that they're holding strong to their original statement, which to me means that maybe that's what they're going to do. Maybe whatever it is that they want to do, they want to keep private. Maybe they don't want to make it a big deal or something else along those lines. Now, something I will say that I do think is actually true, and I do think that they should do. As you can see, they say that they're going to continue with this donation up till December 31st of 2019. Meaning that once they hit December 31st, 2019, they will no longer be issuing um, donations through this. Now, the question that I have here is, is what are they going to do at December 31st, 2019? What are they going to do January 1st, 2020? What are they going to do? And the thing that I think that they should do, and this is just my opinion, and because I think what they're going to do, I think, I think that they've got everything essentially handled, and I, I do distrust it a little bit because it's a big company, and you never really know 100% what they're going to be doing with the money, because even though they're saying that, oh, they're not going to make any money off of it, that doesn't mean that they're not going to still make money off of it, because they might find a way to do so. But maybe they're just trying to work a little bit into it to make it so that there's a way for them to find... Uh, way to donate all of the money to the family regardless of who or what territory you come from however what i do believe that they should do and they should probably even mention this they should probably tell people this once they hit december 31st once january 1st 2020 comes on i believe that they should issue the dlc for free to anyone who wants it i think they should probably just give anybody who owns shadows of war already the do the dlc I think that would make the most sense, and I think that would show that they really do, they really are just trying to pay homage to one of their friends. That, of course, is going to be the end of this video. I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Uh, this article, of course, will be in the description below. I want you guys' opinion on this, so feel free to leave messages in the, in the comment box below. I'll be happy to go on ahead and uh, to pick you up on those. We'll have a nice little discussion about it. But you guys know the drill by now. If you like the video, go on and hit that like button if you liked it. If you really liked it, go on and hit that share button. And if you loved it, go on and hit that sub button if you haven't already. And of course, as always, guys, good luck out there. And don't forget to have fun.